Hello, my name is Željko Mihajlović. If you cannot pronounce that, you can call me Sodi. Welcome to my very first Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll be learning how to create a rock environment in just a few minutes and by using only one rock object. This is the result that we're going to get at the end, so let's get started. First thing that we're going to do is add an environment texture. It's an HDR. I'm using a free HDR from hdri skiescom You can go there and download a variety of different HDRs for free. This is the rock that we're going to be using. It's a photogrammetry generated rock and you can download it by following the link in the description of this video. Let's go to a new layer, add a plane, press S and 8 on the numpad to scale it up, go to particle settings, add a new particle system, set the type to hair, check advanced, check random, scroll down to Render tab, click on Object and select our rock as the object. Next, check Rotation, set Initial Orientation to Global Z and increase both of these random values to 1 and 2. Increase the random size and let's add a new texture. Click on New, go to your textures, select Particle System Texture, set the type to Clouds, open Colors, click on Ramp, Set the brightness to 1.5 and contrast to 2.5. Check hard. Set the size to 0.75 and depth to 8. And to apply this texture we're going to need to click density here. Let's go back to our particle system. Let's increase the number to 6000. And let's add a new particle. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we need to uncheck emitter here so it won't render our plane. We're going to be using a different plane for as our uh, ground. Okay, so let's add a new particle system and we're going to be using the same settings from the first one, which is particle settings. Select particle settings, click on plus, and let's name these. First one will be small rocks. Second is medium rocks. We're going to click on a plus here. Well, we already did. Okay. So we're going to set the mission number to 3000 and uh, scroll down to our texture. Click on plus to duplicate it. Go to our texture tab. Make sure that it is 001. And just click this little button to flip the color ramp go back to our particle settings and let's increase the size of this to 1.5 add a new particle system again we're using the same settings click on plus to duplicate them let's name this large rocks set the number to 800 and the size will be 3 for this one Click on plus to add a new particle system. Again, we're using the same settings. Click on plus to duplicate them. Let's name this extra large rocks. Set the emission to 100 and size to 6. Now you can see that we already have a very randomized rock environment. Now we need to add a ground plane. Let's move to a new layer. Add a new plane, again S and 8 and numpad to scale it up. Now press tab to go to edit mode, U to unwrap and press W, S which is subdivide here. So press a couple of times, like four times is enough. Go back to object mode, go to modifiers, add a subdivision surface modifier, set it to 2 and let's add a displacement modifier. Click on New Texture here, go to your texture, make sure you're on this place. And we're going to load our uh, rocky soil displacement image, which you can download in the link on the description. And um, also you can download it on my Facebook page. So we're going to use this. Let's... Uh, Go to image mapping, 
and set values for x and y to 4. Go to our, our uh, displacement uh, modifier and let's set the strength to 0 0.025. Increase the number of subdivisions to 4, that's quite enough. Set the shading to smooth and let's add the material for this. Add the new image texture, connect it to the diffuse. We're going to use rocky soil diffuse here and I'm going to press Ctrl T to add texture coordinate and mapping node. You can enable this add-on by going to File, User Preferences and you're going to search for Node Wrangler add-on which is a standard Blender add-on. Again we're going to set the mapping for uh, this image texture the same as we did for the displacement texture, so 4 on both X and Y. Let's see how it looks. It looks ok, and this is going to be barely visible, so we can decrease the subdivision surface level to 3, just to reduce our uh, poly count. Ok, let's go back, and now we have a ground plane. Let's see how it all looks. And one more thing that we can do to randomize this even further is place some rocks manually, by hand. Now you can see that our color of our ground plane is not matching the color of our rocks. So we're going to fix that. Let's select our ground plane, go to our image texture, add a add shader, and mix it with another diffuse shader. And we're going to set the color for this to some brownish color which is similar to our rock terrain. So now if we check it out, we can see that there is no obvious variation in color. Okay, now this ground plane is pretty flat. If you want to have bumps on it and not be very uniform, you can easily do that. Let's select only the layer with our plane which has the particle systems on it and let's just for now turn off the visibility. Press tab to go to edit mode, press WS a few times and you can introduce fractals to randomize this terrain a little more. Press C to select some parts of it, like this here. Press O to turn on proportional editing, then G, Z, and scroll down to increase the size of this uh, circle. And we're going to just uh, make some uh, variations in this uh, terrain. This is good enough. Let's turn back on our particle system and you can see that it's following our uh, plane really good. But our ground plane is still flat. What we can do is select only the layer with the particle systems again and turn off the visibility, press Shift D, right click, move it to a different layer and delete the particle systems for this uh, plane. Select the plane, select the layer with the ground plane, select them both, control L, link materials and link modifiers. We're going to set the shading to smooth for this one. And now when we go back to our uh, plane with the particle system on and enable it in the view, we will see that our ground plane is now following our uh, terrain. So, one more thing, let's uh, duplicate this rock that we are using, move it to a different layer and we're going to manually uh, place it somewhere, wherever we want to. We're going to create like a little arch. You can do this as much as you like, play around with uh, rotating it and uh, creating different and interesting patterns. 
So let's create like this uh, arch. Okay, that's pretty good. You can also duplicate it here. Uh, set your cursor to a, any uh, point on your rock. Press period and scale towards that cursor. Press comma again to bring back your uh, pivot point to your object. This looks fine. And one more thing that we can do is, for example, select one of these and add a particle system to it. We're going to select the same particle settings. And with this you can uh, place like uh, a bunch of uh, tiny rock rocks anywhere you want. Or you can change the settings of the particle systems. Or you can do pretty much anything. So this looks good for now. Let's see how it looks in the render view. That looks like a rocky terrain. We need to select the layer where we have our uh, ground plane that we made. So now you can see it uh, it looks quite nice. What it does lack are some uh, additional lighting uh, spheres. So let's add that. Let's go to our world settings and select strength to 1. And let's add some spheres that will light up this additionally. Go to object settings, scroll all the way down to cycle settings and under Ray Visibility, Uncheck Camera and Shadow. Then we're going to set the material for this to be Emission and just a bit orange. I'm going to set the strength to 5. You can duplicate these as much as you want. You can change the color for each one, make a little variation in lighting, and you can play with lighting quite a lot actually. It's very fun part of this process. Let's duplicate this one and click plus to create a new material for it and let's select the color to be a bluish color. Let's set the strength to 10 and let's increase it in size and pull it all the way up and this is going to simulate our uh, lighting that comes from the sky. So this is maybe a bit too much. Let's set the strength to 8, 7, 7 is ok. Now we can go to top view and see how our terrain looks. Still the color is very strong of the sky so let's say 4. This looks much better. It would look even better if we created some uh, light sources that are a bit stronger. We're going to duplicate this material and set the strength to 10. Now we have some uh, variation in lighting, which is good. We have some points that are more lit than others because we don't know what is around us and maybe the sun is just shining on that particular part more than the others. We can go to uh, our our scene settings under color management, select uh, film emulation. We can play around with these exposure and gamma values. Also we can use curves here. You can play around with these settings as much as you want. Let's set our camera to be around here. I like to go to my camera and select focal length of 50. And this looks like a pretty interesting shot. That's good enough. Let's just hide this sphere for a moment and you can see how it looks without the lighting of the sky. 
Now let's set our uh, focal point around there, add an empty plane axis, go to our camera settings and under focus we're going to select our empty. For the aperture we're going to select f-stop and set the value to 0 0.8. Maybe we can go even lower, let's say 0 0.1. Also, let's press alt h to bring back our skylighting. This is just maybe too much blur, so let's say 0 0.2. This works well. And this is actually a complete scene. We can render it right now, or we can observe it from multiple angles and see how it looks. just need to make sure that I haven't forgot something. So it looks very random from different angles. It looks like a rocky terrain and you cannot find two same rocks even if you tried. That is the beauty of randomization, of rotation and size. So, I hope you like this result. Um, I actually did this tutorial a bunch of times and I always got the different results, so this one is one of them, so I guess it's okay. Okay, so let's uh, render this. Let's select a cool uh, angle. Maybe this one will be good. We need to make sure <laughs> where our empty is right now because I just changed the angle. And let's see, it's right there. Beautiful. That's perfect. Let's render this. So, that's the end of our tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. And please, if you make anything by using this method, don't hesitate to send me the image or to tag me in your post or whatever. Post it in the comments. Comment. Uh, leave tips and such. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next tutorial. Have a great day.